Hey guys, Sam here, and this month marks a special occasion. Ten years ago, a video game was released in Europe, and it's warmed as a special place in my heart, the Dog Island. Nah, I'm just kidding, it's Mario Kart Wii, but why is it so significant? Well, here's how I feel. When people ask me the question, what is your favourite gaming console of all time, my answer will always be the Nintendo Wii. And sure its reputation was tarnished by so many awful games and its motion sensor controls, but the decent ones are amazing. And the fact that people to this day still talk about the good old days of Wii Sports and remixing the system's music are a testament to the console's legacy. Between 2007 and 2012, everybody had a go on a Wii. Even my late granddad spent a hectic New Year's Eve playing one, and my nanny played bowling where she got a strike on her first go. I've still got all my Wii games from my childhood, and looking back now as a 19 year old university student, I have very happy memories. Though, I might be blinded by nostalgia. Was 2008 really that good with the world economy taking a huge nosedive? But I couldn't care at all. I got the Wii for my 9th birthday in 2007 and immediately fell in love with Wii Sports and Super Mario Galaxy, the latter of which is my favourite game of all time and I might do a video comparing it to Mario Odyssey. I also got Ratatouille and... Well, you can probably guess whether or not a movie tie-in is any good. By the following April, the Wii was unstoppable. Coupled with the DS line also doing well worldwide, Nintendo's gamble of casual gaming was paying off immensely. The Xbox 360 had Halo 3 and Modern Warfare but was riddled by hardware issues and the PS3 was a joke. An unattractive George Foreman grill at $600, f*** all in terms of games, and Chad Warden taking no prisoners. Sup bitches. Sup bitches. It's Chad Warden here. But that doesn't matter. What matters however is that in April of 2008, Nintendo released Mario Kart Wii, the sixth installment in the series, and I was excited. Super Circuit was my first exposure on the Game Boy Advance and we missed out on Double Dash because everybody including us had PS2s. Tony Hawk's Underground and The Simpsons Hit and Run were boss titles, trust me! I did play Mario Kart DS and my brother Ollie got our copy for Christmas in 2005 and it was the first time I was exposed to online gaming. Through our broadband Netgear router, we could play against anybody around the world, but half the time our connection was awful and there was constant lagging in races, so that was a bit clapped. Anyways, the Wii version comes out on April 11th 2008 and I can't wait. However, there is a problem. No stock! The game is sold out wherever I go. Game. Argos. I can even remember going to WH Smith to see if I was lucky, but no. There was nothing. Nada. So my next option with mum was to head into the Woolworths in town and order a copy that would be mine when the next stock arrived. We were told they would take two weeks to arrive, which was agonising, until the next day after I came back home from school, lo and behold was a brand new copy of Mario Kart Wii, stored inside a big box to house a free Wii wheel inside. I still remember the complete surprise I had when I saw it in our living room, and reading through an incredibly thick instruction manual before playing it. But I had it, I finally had it, and after looking through a review from the official Nintendo magazine, I could finally experience it myself. Let's see how that went. This is not a review of the game, just to reiterate. It's a retrospective instead, and it does improve a lot from the previous games. For one, the visuals are great. Even if the Wii could only output at 480p compared to its hasty competitors, there is no denying that the colourful decor of the courses are stunning. For instance, the autumn vibes of Maple Treeway are glorious, from the orange forest, gigantic wigglers and bouncy bridge, Donkey Kong snowboard crosser with falling cannon and endless opportunities to perform tricks, a new feature for the series, and finally, Coconut Mall. Man, I wish all shopping centres were like this. Drive your car inside a real one and you'll get arrested in no time. I've done it myself. Not really. Furthermore, new items were added to spice up the gameplay. The Mega Mushroom from New Super Mario Bros. is here, turning you into a giant who can squash the other drivers, the power block was added, and the Thunder Cloud. Actually, don't get me started, that one is terrible. Mm! There are 8 Grand Prix Cups in total, half of which have race courses new to the game and the others are retro tracks, an idea inherited from Mario Kart DS although Super Sugger did allow you to play all the tracks from Super Mario Kart. All of the courses have their own small charms, along with an excellent soundtrack, and none of which I would consider a dull track. While Mario Kart 8 has an equally stunning set of tracks, there are some that I'd rather not play in. Additionally, there are time trials, along with ghost races, versus races where you can choose any track you want, and the battle mode consisting of two choices, from balloon battle to coin runners, and similar to the regular races, there is a mix of new and old courses that are all great fun to play. 
The characters were also plentiful, varying from lightweight, middle and heavyweight classes. Dry Bowser and Funky Kong were splendid, and if you had a Super Mario Galaxy save file on your Wii, you could unlock Rosalina too. However, I'm not sure as to why there are so many baby characters in the game. Like, was there any demand for Baby Daisy? You could even play as your own me, even though they shout the exact same phrase if you play as them. And lastly, depending on the weight, you can choose what car to drive and, for the first time in a Mario Kart game, a bike. This was my preferred choice as Yoshi and the Match Bike, though I do remember briefly playing as Baby Luigi in the Blue Falcon. Green Falcon? Huh? The controls themselves are excellent in that there is a diverse range to choose from. Indeed, you can use the Wii Remote Nunchuck Hybrid, a GameCube and a Classic Controller, but the best option by far was the Wii Wheel, and it was bundled with every copy of Mario Kart Wii for a reason. Sure, it sounds like a gimmick, literally just a piece of plastic shaped like a steering wheel, but it works really well. The motion controls are solid, and it was my preferred method to control. I can even remember getting an inflatable car to use for the game, where you could stick a Wii Remote on an inferior plastic wheel, but that was awful. Seriously, I was too big for it, so that went in the bin. Drifting has two options, from the traditional manual way where you can do quick boosts, or, for the casual gamers, automatic drifting. Never mind that, it sucks, and it's for juvenile bastards who read the Daily Mail on a daily basis. Do you read the Daily Mail? Set that shit on fire please, it's fucking worthless. The game even had its own channel, aptly dubbed the Mario Kart channel, and it was basically the same mode found on the disc, but you didn't need one to access it. You could check worldwide scores, friend codes and all that jazz, but if you wanted to play a race, you still needed the disc with you. Ah oh well. But perhaps the best feature of this game by far was its online multiplayer. Ah, oh, damn, I've got a lot to say here. While local multiplayer was great in its own right, the ability to go do the same theme but with a bunch of strangers worldwide was quite something. And unlike Mario Kart DS, it was no near as laggy, although sometimes you would be in the middle of a race and all of a sudden, BOOM, you've been disconnected, and you would lose loads of points. But what points exactly? Well, they would contribute to your race rating, or VR, and it was a big motivation to play this game online. At the beginning of a file, everybody started with the same race rating of 5,000, but through hours of blood, sweat and tears, you can make it to the top at 9,999. When the Nintendo Wi-Fi connection servers were still up, I used to play online every single day. Not because it was compulsory, but because it was so bloody fun, and I did reach the highest score at one point in 2010. Unfortunately, there was not much evidence to support my claim, but it did happen. This grainy photo I took on New Year's Day 2011 shows that over 3,000 hours were spent on my console playing Mario Kart Wii, and pretty much most of it was down to me. Sadly, my Wii was then crushed by my balance board a month later, and once it was fixed, the hard drive was wiped out with a factory reset. I have two save files with the Wii and Wii U, and with the restored Wii save file, I played over 15,000 races, and an additional 9,000 on the newer file. Jeez, that's pretty big! I didn't realise how much of a baller I was. Hashtag Renboys. The servers were eventually shut down in May 2014 to make way for more servers on newer games like Mario Kart 8 and Super Smash Bros. so it's not quite easy to get footage these days. However, I did record some footage on my Elgato Game Catcher HD a few months prior and now is the perfect time to use them. Plus, I had two copies of the game because the first one's disc got completely buggered by my Wii when it had a faulty disc drive. Another online bonus was the tournament where you would race in the course, but with a twist. These monthly tasks varied from collecting coins, driving through gates, or running away from a chain jump, but the coolest one by far was set in the Galaxy Arena, a stage exclusive to this mode where you had to knock down a couple of spiky top men, an enemy from Super Mario Galaxy. I didn't care too much about the tournaments, but they were a good way to flex your muscles, and they're no longer running because of the discontinued Wi-Fi servers. Rest in peace. Finally, we can't talk about the online gameplay without the hackers. The Wii was a fairly easy console to hack, and if you downloaded a homebrew channel, you could cheat in races. I did it myself for a brief while in 2009 before I stopped because I was bored of winning every race, and cheating in general is not acceptable. There were two types of hackers, 40W where people hacked the game simply to win with their powers, and best of all, 40L. These people were a godsend because if instead of trying to win, they would cause carnage by spamming blue shells and lightning bolts, and they would always lose, meaning that you would get a huge amount of race points because of the exaggerated ratings of 35,000 or more going down, only to then come up. The most famous of these hackers was Mr. Bean, and this guy is still active to this day, playing the game to find new quirks, and I have a ton of respect for him. What a legend.
In conclusion, Mario Kart Wii is a terrific title and it's still so much fun to play 10 years after its initial release. I did play Mario Kart 7 on the 3DS when that came out, but it was a bit disappointing. Of course I played it a lot, but I soon found myself heading back to the Wii, partly because the shoulder buttons on my launch model 3DS weren't working and the courses were better. Mario Kart 8 meanwhile is awesome and I liked one of the most famous posts about it on the now discontinued Miiverse. The deluxe version on the Switch is even more stellar because of its home and portable hybridity. Me and my uni flatmates have played races against each other and it is the shit. But, despite the more recent Mario Kart's release since, the Wii version is still my favourite out of them all, and a huge, huge part of my childhood and adolescence to an extent. So there you go, Mario Kart Wii. What a game. Do you have any memories of this game? If so, post your comments down below, and if you enjoyed this video, please go give it a like and subscribe to my channel for more great content in the future. And don't forget to hit the bell as well. This was a lot of fun to put together, and I'll be back soon with more great content as well as some music. Until next time, I'll see you all later. Cheerio! Oh yeah, and if you're wondering what happened to the Warwaps in town, well, it's now a Tesco's. Hashtag Sites for St Albans.